right, this time we're going to talk about Anderson and his endless genealogies. All right, he comes up with one of the most nut job, idiotic bunch of nonsense I've ever heard of in my entire life. And it, it just, it defies any kind of logic. It's just like, what are you even saying? I mean, it's insanity. Let's watch some of this. Now, some people who just who don't comprehend this, here's what they'll say. Well, how could we all be descended from Abraham when there were other people living at that time to descend from? Because you don't descend from one person. You descend from millions of people. And only one of them has to be a descendant of Israel. Okay. You don't descend from one person. You descend from millions of people. Okay. So what Anderson does is he actually takes what the Bible teaches... Eve is the mother of all living, okay? One woman there, you know? And that's the Bible way, by the way, too. That's what the Jews do. They will descend, or they will, they will see about genealogy through the woman, through the woman's line, the uh, matrilineal line. And you say, why do they do that? Because you can't fake who your mother is. You can fake who your father is. But, you know, obviously, when the baby comes out of the woman, uh, she's the mother, Okay? So that's why they go that way. But Eve is the mother of all living. Stephen Anderson said, you're not descended from one person. You're descended from millions of people. Okay? And you're going to see here in this chart thing that he does, he actually goes back. He starts out with one, and he goes backward and says, you'd have to have 18 quadrillion people in the past. Huh? Again, he's something's wrong up here. But let's continue. And I'm about to make a really big promise. And I'm going to deliver on that promise. <laughs> and when I first make this promise, many of you are not going to believe that I'm able to do what I say I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to, I'm going to promise to do something. And many of you are going to not believe that I'm able to fulfill what I'm going to guarantee you. But, but let me tell you something. I will deliver, okay? And I don't say that lightly. <laughs> just, just, just hear me out, okay? I've, have I proven that we're spiritually the sons of Abraham? I mean, I've done that in many other sermons. Have I proven that we're of Israel? We've been brought nigh into Israel. We're sons of Israel. Spiritually, listen to me tonight. You're not going to believe me, but when I'm done, you will see it. I'm going to prove to you tonight that you are a physical descendant of Abraham. I'm going to prove it to you tonight. I'll go a step further. I am going to prove to you tonight that you are physically descended from Israel himself. Not even just of Ishmael or Midian. I'm going to prove to you tonight that you have physically descended from Israel. You say, I'm black. I'll prove it to you. <laughs> you say, I'm Chinese. I'll prove it to you. I'm Korean. I'll prove it to you. I'm white. I'll prove it to you. You see, again, mind control being used here. You're not going to believe me, but when I'm done with you, you're going to. And what's he do? You're physically, physically, and he's yelling and stuff like this. And you look out at the, his little crowd there that he has, uh, his, his mind-controlled zombies, and they're going, Amen, 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 you know, when he's yelling at them. See, yelling exalts the flesh. It, it raises the flesh and it, it takes down the ability to critically think up here. Absolutely. Proven fact. Let's continue watching. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Pastor Anderson's out of his mind. There's no way he can prove that. Look, when I'm done tonight, the only people who will disagree with me are just people who don't understand science and math. Again, we see this thing. The only people who are going to disagree with me are those who don't understand science and math. What about those of us who hold to the Bible and won't compromise? Let's continue. No scientist will disagree when I'm done tonight. No mathematician will disagree when I'm done that you... Well, surely you don't mean me. I mean you are descended physically from Israel. Not spiritually, physically. 
Okay? If everybody is physically descended from Israel, then the Bible is not true. Why? God makes a distinction in Revelation chapter 7 between Jews and Gentiles. God has future plans for Israel. If Israel is no more physically, if they are no more, the Bible's a lie. That's what's at the root of this whole thing. But let's continue. I'm sorry to be vexing you like this. You know, it's vexing to me. But I'm just putting this thing out there for a lot of the people out, you know, that have questions: Is Stephen Anderson legitimate and things? I'm I'm showing this guy to be the liar that he is because if you don't answer him, then he's like, nobody can answer me. Nobody can debunk me. So let's go another one here. Now. At the bottom of this family tree, we just have one person. These circles represent people. So at the bottom of the family tree, we just have one person, which is you. Now, you descend from two people, don't you? Your mother and your father. So if we go back one generation, you come from two people as a direct descendant, right? But if we go back another generation, you don't just have two grandparents, you have four grandparents. And it keeps doubling, doesn't it? Because you have two parents, four grandparents, eight great-grandparents, 16 great-great-grandparents, and you have 32 great-great-great-grandparents. Everybody follow so far? And it keeps doubling because everybody has two parents, okay? Okay. Now here's where the false science starts to come in at. Here's where his deception, his little, his little uh, card game, little hat trick, whatever you want to call it, here's where it doesn't work. Because what he says is, everybody has all unique ancestors. That's not true. That is not true. You can take two people, Japheth and his wife, and the Bible talks about it, Genesis chapter 10. And it shows his son goes over here, and his son goes over there, and his son goes over there. See, the Bible system is it starts out with one up in here, or two, I should say, and it goes to here, and it goes to there, and it goes to there, and it goes down and as it goes down there's more and more people Stephen Anderson is actually flipping the whole system and saying you have to go back and there would be more if this is the way it works and there will be more people as you go back that's why it doesn't work well who out there would ever teach that we all have unique ancestors and we all you know any Denlinger that ever lived they all come from unique separate people huh I mean, here in the state of Maine, I don't know of any other Denlingers in this entire state. I mean, I look at the, I don't know, there might be, but I look at the phone book and it's like, there are no Denlingers in this whole area up in here. But you know what? I go back down to Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, where I'm from, there's other Denlingers. There's a bunch of other Denlingers there, a whole bunch in the, in the phone book, see? And you go different parts of the country where their Denlingers went and they settled and things like that too, there's Denlingers there. But you know what? If you take all those Denlingers, you don't say, oh, we all have different, unique ancestors. No. I have cousins and second and seven, you know, cousin, cousin departed and whatever. You know, there's, there's people we go back. We don't go back to all unique ancestors. We go back to just a few ancestors. But that doesn't mean that somehow I'm also tied into the Jews and tied into the Africans and tied into the Chinese and tied into the... It doesn't mean that. See? So he's using false science to try and overthrow what the Bible teaches. That God has special plans for the nation of Israel in the end times. That's the whole purpose of this whole thing. See, this is an endless genealogy. This is something, when the Bible talks about endless genealogies, in, um, let's look up the verse here. First Peter, or excuse me, First Timothy chapter 1. Timothy, not Peter. First Timothy chapter 1. Second Timothy, First Timothy, chapter one, verse four. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith. So do. Okay, what's going on there? What is what is happening here? Is people are coming along and they're doing these endless genealogies, which Anderson actually admits is what he's doing, and what's it do? It ministers questions. And it's not godly edifying that it gives you. You know what godly edifying is? 
Well, the Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 7, that God has a distinction between 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes and you have uh, the great multitude, you know, there that's that's comes out of, the, of that great tribulation time period, that time of Jacob's trouble, I should say. Excuse me. They come out of that. So there's a distinction in the Bible. But you use endless genealogies to try and overthrow it, like Stephen Anderson is trying to do. But let's continue watching this nonsense here. Now, our parents are two different people. Our grandparents are four different people. Our great-grandparents are eight different people. Now, how, how could we have, uh, you know, three grandparents? You know, it'd be like a guy with two wives and people are marrying their half-sister. It'd be a mess, okay? So these people are all unique people. You know, if I made a family tree like this, these would all be unique names, all unique people, all different people. Okay? They're all unique people. They're all different names. They're all, they're all different. They're all di That's not science. I'm sure if you take my family of Denlingers and another family that lives in Ohio that's, that's Denlinger or something, and you take those two Denlingers and you trace it back, we're not all going to have unique ancestors. You go back far enough, we're going to be related. You know? There was a, a, an accountant that I used to have, and she was married to a Denlinger. And he was not a direct, exact, like a first cousin or even a second cousin or something like that. But I guarantee you, you trace it back far enough, we're related. See, what he's assuming is, with this whole mathematical thing here is, one person goes back to two, goes back to four, goes back to... What if you have a family that has 12 children? How many children could be created from that original couple of two? See, that's the Bible way to go forward, all right? You don't look and you say, oh, I'm going to reverse what the Bible order is. You don't start out with Adam and Eve or Noah and his three sons and their three wives. No, no, you don't do it that way. You reverse it. You flip it over to try and disprove the Bible. Unless you're Stephen Anderson, then you do whatever you want to try and destroy Scripture. Let's continue. When I went back 10 generations, you know what I started noticing? These are no longer unique people. Why? Because people marry their... Don't you hate it when you, you accidentally marry your seventh cousin and you didn't even know that she was such a close relative? You know, obviously, you don't know. I mean, who here can name their third cousins? Okay. Now, here he admits it. He admits, you know, I, you go back ten generations, we're not dealing with unique individual people anymore. So he admits it. But then he'll flip right around and say, so now that we've proved it, that you'd have to have all these people as unique ancestors. Let's keep watching. This, I mean, this guy is just so nuts. But what I want you to understand is that by the time I got to the 10th generation here, these 1,024 people were not all unique because there had been some intermarriage in that 300 years that had unknowingly taken place. Let's go back 20 generations. Okay. Let me stop. You go back to the, you know, 10 generations or whatever, and there had been in some intermarriage in there and stuff like this that had taken place unknowingly. Again, you know, uh, no, it's, it's just, I'm sure that these people, you know, you go back, you have, with me, we'll say two original Denlingers, man and a woman, and they decide, let's call them ourselves Denlingers. Now they have 10 children, and those 10 children each have five children each, okay? And then those all those children there, they each have, you know, some have eight, some have nine, some have ten, some have three, whatever else. It comes down like this. And you might get a couple generations departed. You might have some of those, you know, seventh or eighth cousins or whatever coming together and getting married. You know? Yeah. I mean, that is science. That is stuff that can be verified. That's stuff that can be proved. But Anderson is saying, okay, yeah, they're not all unique individual ancestors, but my chart here is based on unique individual ancestors, and I'm going to show you how crazy that is. Let's watch. So now we're back around the year 1400. Well, if I wanted to have a complete family tree, I would have to have a piece of paper that could fit 1,048,576 names. That's a pretty big piece of paper. Yep. Yep. Hold on. 
He just got done saying, they're not all unique anymore, but if I want to have a unique family tree, this is what it would look like. Let's keep watching. It's an unbelievably sized piece of paper. Now, do you think all of these people are going to be unique? No. Maybe not, right? Okay. Now, let me just show you the scripture. I'm going to come back to that chart. Just digest that for a minute. Okay. Now, before, see, here's the deception. The people are starting to figure out. They're like, well, wait a second. They, can, they couldn't all be unique. There's no way. And Anderson's like, oh, no, let me just walk away from the chart here, and I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to yell at you for a little bit behind the pulpit, pretend it's preaching. And then when I get your mind distracted, then I'll come back and mess with your head a little bit more. This is exactly what he does. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 1. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, it says in verse 4, Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies. I want you to keep that phrase in your mind. Endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. Now in Titus, he just said avoid genealogies. But here he says to avoid uh, endless genealogies. Now I'm going to show you why genealogies are endless. They truly are endless. Okay, so here again. Avoid endless genealogies, which is what I'm showing you right now. It's like saying, um, uh, you know, the Bible says avoid fornication. I'm here to pick up your daughter to go fornicate with her. Huh? See how messed up this Anderson guy is? Incredible. Let's watch, show you a little bit more of this nonsense. The real number that we want to go back to is not 1100 AD. Let's go back to 70 AD because 70 AD is when all the Jews were scattered into all nations. And they were scattered into all nations. Okay? If we were to go back to 70 AD and we were to have a family tree that shows all of our ancestors in 70 AD and how they're connected, that top line would have 18 quintillion, 446 quadrillion, 744 trillion names from 70 AD. Now, who thinks that there were 18 quintillion, 446 quadrillion, 744 trillion people living at the time of Christ, or shortly thereafter. No. In so how did he arrive at this number of 18 quintillion? How did he arrive at that number? Through false science that he just previously admitted wasn't even real. You go back just 10 generations, and obviously there's, there's intermarrying and mixing and things like this, you know, within uh, the, the families and stuff. It, it's not all unique ancestors. But here's my chart showing you that it's all unique ancestors. See, as I've been saying, brethren, this is not the Holy Spirit that leads this guy. This is a lying spirit of a devil that can just come out and, and tell you one thing and then just spin it right around and say, see, I've proved it. You know? No, they, they couldn't possibly be. I mean, you do your, your family tree and things. Obviously, they're not all unique family members. But here's my chart proving that the unique family members would add up to too many for there to be true. So I've proven to you that the Bible can't possibly be true because of all the unique ancestors. I mean, the guy is, the guy is just nuts. So think about this. What if I were buying a lottery ticket and the odds of that lottery ticket coming up a winner are 1 in 27? Does everybody understand? Because that's the winning ticket that says, you're Jewish, you're of the chosen people. You are of Israel. You are an Israelite indeed. I've got a 1 in 27 chance of pulling that number. Okay. You say, well, Pastor Anderson, if you have a 1 in 27 chance, you're probably not going to win that lottery because you got 26 chances of losing. Okay. But what if I buy 18 quintillion lottery tickets? Okay. So he says, you know, we'll say 1 in 27 people are Jews back in 70 AD. So I don't have a very good chance of being Jewish. But what if I buy 18 quintillion Lottery tickets. But you just proved that there weren't that many people back then. He just admitted. They're not all unique ancestors, but they are unique ancestors, so, you know, I can prove my system. Uh, I mean, 
listening to this guy and watching this guy, it just, it, it, it wears you out. The lies are just so numerous. You start to lose track of them after a while. I mean, people, if you haven't woken up to this man yet, that he is a liar, a total, complete con artist and liar, I don't know what to say for you. I feel bad for you. Let's watch a little bit more. You think I'm going to win? So what if I buy 18 quintillion lottery tickets and I got a 1 in 27 chance of striking Jewish? You think I'm going to hit it? Now, how many, let me ask this. How many times do I have to hit it to be descended from Abraham? How many times do I have to hit it to be descended from Israel? So how, how can anyone in here say, I'm not descendant from Israel? I'm not Jew. I don't have a drop of Jewish blood in my body. You're saying that you basically, out of all these chances, cause, and I realize that these are not unique people. Okay, there are not 18 quintillion ancestors. But there, you're filling out your family tree. There are 18 spots. 18 quintillion. I can't even say these numbers. 18 quintillion spots for you to write a name. Oh, oh this, this guy. Oh, man. He's such a stinking liar. I realize that there are not 18 quintillion people, but you're filling out your family tree. There's 18 quintillion spots. What? So according to Anderson, there were 18 quintillion people back then, so the chances of you being a descendant of a Jew is so much greater and higher then. But even though there isn't 18 quintillion people back then. We'll finish up here. Of someone in that generation that you d directly descend from, and only one of them, only one of them has to be an Israelite. I got a couple more clips here, but honestly, I don't even know how much more of this ridiculous filth I even want to watch anymore because it's just, it, it's, it's so insane. You know, I mean, there's 18 quintillion people back there, even though I realized that there weren't really 18 quintillion people. But, but since there are 18 quintillion, ten, quintillion people back then, you have a much greater chance of becoming a Jew, of being descended from a Jew, even though what I just showed you isn't even science. Watch a little bit more. We'll watch. I'm just going to skim through some of these clips and see what I want to include. I have uh, five more clips that I got out of his videos. Let me just see through these and I'll see if I want to include any more of this or, you know, if I should even waste any more of your time. I said, how many Jewish ancestors do I I said, I did my family tree and I said 10 generations back. So at this level, because I, I, I really did, I found someone with a Jewish name. And he said, well, as long as it's the matrilineal line, because they do it on the mother's side for some bizarre reason, as long as it's matrilineal, he said, then you're Jewish. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so see, Stephen Anderson says that 10 generations back, he found one of his ancestors had a Jewish name. So as long as it's matrilineal, um, then that proves that he's Jewish. No, it proves that somebody had a name, and he didn't even say what the name is, by the way. He never even names it. He doesn't tell us what it is. You're just supposed to take his word, and I mean, you can just trust Stephen Anderson because he never lies. He's just so trustworthy. Yeah, but you know, a Jewish name proves Jewish descent, according to Stephen Anderson. He's insane, and he, and he was like, I don't understand why it come from the matrilineal. That's kind of some bizarre reason. I explained it before, because determining somebody's kindred, you do it through the matrilineal, through the mother, okay, because you can't fake who the mother is. When the baby comes out, you know who the mother is, okay, she's the one that the baby just came out of. You can fake the father, but you can't fake the mother. That's why the Jews do that. Well, let's finish up this little clip here. Then we're all Jewish. But do you see now why Israel doesn't let you use DNA to return to the land? I want to return. I want to return to my homeland of my ancestors. Let me return to Israel. I'm an Israelite. Prove it. Uh, 
<laughs> Let's, I mean, John Hagee ought to buy me a ticket. <laughs> help, the Jew, help this Jew return to the homeland. I don't want to go, but here. Anyway. <laughs> Anderson, if you don't repent, you're going to burn in hell. Absolutely, totally headed for hell right now. You are not saved. You are a false convert. You are a false prophet. You are a wicked, disgusting papist. <laughs>